I am super excited to finally being able to produce this video because it serves as the most basic foundation for understanding how all, repeat, all of tonal music works. And so to that end, what we're going to do is we're going to use a very simple musical pattern as an example, a C major scale. And we're going to transform our view of what makes this scale tick. And that transformation means going from viewing the scale as just a string of linear stepwise notes where all the notes are created equal, and to transform that into a hierarchical view, a hierarchical functional view that recognizes a few things. One, that each of these notes has a unique uh, consonance or dissonance, a unique degree of harmonic stability or instability, a unique degree of harmonic tension or release with respect to not just the key center, but with respect to each other. So, what I've done here, we're going to just make more sense when we go to the piano. What I've done here is I've redrawn all the notes in a C major scale, but I've redrawn them with the understanding that each of these notes has various degrees of stability, instability, and harmonic tension or harmonic release, or, and also uh, dissonance or consonance with respect to the key center do. And when you do that, you get something that looks like this. So in order, right, do and do is consonant with itself. So comes next. Me comes next. I have a video on why this is the case, by the way. Look at look it up. It's uh, you can you can search for the um, physical basis of harmony. We have a one mutant one string guitar that explains all of this. And then we have the other notes in order. And we're going to go to the piano. Don't worry about it for now. Just don't believe me. But I mean, do believe me, but don't accept it without doing the experiment yourself. We're going to go to the piano and we're going to play these notes in the context of the key center do. And I want to go go a little deeper into this. And again, my hope is that we absolutely transform the way we look at scales, but even in a more broader sense, we understand that the fundamental basis of what makes melodies and harmony tick, right? In fact, melody and harmony, as you're going to discover, are just two sides of the same musical coin. Got it? Let's go to the piano and have some fun. So here we are at the piano with our C major scale, solfaged. Let's begin by getting this scale in our ears, right? So let's sing, right, out loud. And it don't matter if you sing badly, do your best, right? But for me, singing out loud is the most effective way to internalize all these sounds, right? So let's sing. Solfaged, ready? Do, let's find do. down now. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Now let's do this. Let's establish the key center do by playing it just a single note C in the left hand. And then let's play all the notes in the C major scale and let's just pay attention to the unique sound feelings of each of those notes with respect to Do. Now I've chosen the word sound feelings because it's more than just sound, right? Each of those sounds has a unique uh, impression upon us emotionally, right? So let's pay attention. Here's Do. Do. Let's start with Do. Feels like it's home, stable, consonant, resolved. Let's do Ray right now. Ray, feel Ray, feels a bit unstable. It wants to go so. 
somewhere, right? Ray wants to go maybe up to me Or Ray wants to go down to back to Do Do Re Mi Mi Ah, sounds pretty consonant consonant and stable to least consonant and stable. So, Do is our point of reference, it's the key we're in. Of course, naturally, all the other Do's, wherever they might be, are going to be perfectly consonant and stable. Do, sing, right? Do, do, do. and effective way to internalize these sounds. Got it? These sound feelings, rather. Let's continue. Next in order is me. the most stable and consonant notes that play together when we're talking about a major scale outline a major triad that uses the same root as a scale right this is no coincidence this is yet one more example of how melody and harmony And scales and chords are really just different sides, two different sides of the same coin. Got it? Let's continue. 
Ah, but before we do, let's go ahead because it's going to start getting muddy because we're adding more notes. Let's take this, these three notes here, the simple C major triad. Let's just move it down to my left hand here. Because if we try to play this all together, it's just going to get really muddy. So here's our tonal reference, right? Do, mi, so. Next order in the sequence from most consonant and stable to least is La. Feels like in the key of this. Whoops. Key of this. I sang so. Did you hear me? I caught myself. La, do, la, do. Next in order is re. Re. That's what re sounds and feels like in the key of. And by the way, we're doing this in the key of C, but these sound feelings are going to generalize to every key you play in. Guarantee it. Next in order, Fa. Fa. That's what Fa sounds and feels like in the key of Do. And last but not least, T gonna be super dissonant. T that's what T sounds and feels like in the key of this, in the key of this. So what did we just do there? Well, all we did is mess around with the notes. But not just messed around, we paid attention to the unique sound feeling that each of those notes in the scale had with respect to Do or to the notes uh, that were close by. Hmm. So I hope you just realized that what we did is we just proved the hierarchical nature of scales and that all the notes are not created equal. So what do you do with this? Well, hope, hopefully at the minimum you came away with a new appreciation for what a major scale is and isn't. But I also hope that this serves as a model. When you go forward and you're reading music or you're improvising, that your music reading, your improvisations, your ear training are all informed with this in mind, right? The realization that not all the notes in a scale are created equal, that they all have unique sound feelings with unique functions. And so importantly, right, that a scale is as much a harmonic construct as it is a melodic construct. So for this video, I'm going to leave it at that. But in the future, I'm going to produce another video to show you some really cool ways to start building a repertoire and deep musical understanding, both theoretically and by way of your ear training, that's going to lay such a super foundation for all your music making in the future. So stay tuned for more. Thanks a lot.